Hi, this is Robert Estrin at livingpianos.com with a really hard question to answer. And that is, who is the greatest composer of all time? There's many aspects to this question that I want to delve into first. And that is, when you consider innovation versus just the joyful music. For example, if you ever listen to some John Williams scores, some of his motion pictures, there are absolutely fantastic music. They're beautifully crafted, really romantic era style music, but there's wide variety in his scores of different films. They're not all like Star Wars. You've got, uh, is it Catch Me If You Can? I believe is one of his. There's a lot of great music, yet, He's not regarded necessarily as one of the great composers of all time, as much as one of the great film composers of all time. Why is that? Because he's writing music that could have been written 100 years ago or longer. There's nothing really new in regards to style uh, and innovation. So how important is innovation in who is the greatest composer? Let's take, for example, a late 19th century composer like Brahms, one of my favorite composers of all time. But once again, Brahms, his crafting of music was unparalleled, yet there was nothing really groundbreaking other than just the beauty and the innovation of the actual scores, but it could have been written, you know, uh, decades earlier. Franz Liszt, on the other hand, was writing tone poems in the early 1800s, years, you know, decades before Wagner and Richard Strauss were, you know, composing tone poems. So he was a great innovator. So cutting through all this innovation versus, you know, great content, who really then was the greatest composer of all time? Obviously, there are composers who are regarded as the greatest composers of all time. Mozart, because of the fine crafting of his music, the turning of a phrase that was just so elegant and perfect that, you know, he's on everybody's short list of greatest composers of all time. Not only that, but there's another aspect to this that's really important to talk about, which is the depth of the compositions. I'm not talking about within each piece. I'm talking about a composer like Mozart who wrote, you know, works, choral works, solo piano works, concertos. He wrote flute concertos. He wrote string quartets. He wrote for many different types of ensembles. Now, I think that's important because you take a great composer like Friedrich Chopin, who, well, of course, one of my favorites, naturally, being a pianist. But if you take away Chopin's piano music, you have really not much left of, of great consequence in his output. So is Chopin one of the greatest composers of all time? He's certainly one of the greatest piano composers of all time. But then again, you know, if you really take what composers were able to achieve for the time they composed, if you take a look at Beethoven, now you've got somebody you could really say, my goodness, he took what came before him. You had Mozart, you had Haydn, two of the great classical era composers, as well as many great Baroque composers who preceded them. But where he took music and the expansion of the forms, the expansion of the instrument, he worked with instrument builders, piano builders, expanding the instrument so that Late Beethoven was written, piano music was written for a very different instrument from early Beethoven, in no small part because of how he worked with the builders. And he also expanded the orchestra, larger orchestras, larger forms, instead of three movement symphonies, four movement works in symphonies, concertos, uh, sonatas, and chamber music became much more uh, common in his later works. So I would definitely put Beethoven really high on the list as greatest composers of all time, not because I necessarily prefer his music to some other great composers. Ravel, my goodness, uh, what a great composer and a great innovator who wrote for a very wide range of, of uh, instrumentation, although not the biggest output. So I'm going to come, and now I'm going to get a lot of uh, different opinions here, and they're all justifiable because ultimately it's like, if you have children and say, who's your favorite child? That's a really tough question to answer. And you know, if you're like most parents, you love all your kids for what they bring to the family, right? And I kind of feel that way about composers. But if I really had to pick intellectually, not emotionally, intellectually, Johann Sebastian Bach, when you consider when he lived, 
born in 1685, and you look at anybody who preceded him, you know, you did have, uh, you know, Telemann, a contemporary, Handel, George Frederick Handel, wonderful composer, but Bach's output is just mind-boggling. Not only that, but did you know that a great chunk, a good proportion of his music got destroyed and we don't even know what he wrote, but just the body of work that he wrote for keyboard, organ, and you know, orchestras, the Brandenburg concertos, uh, his oratorios and masses, the works, the depth and the range of compositions, and considering anything before him, it's mind-boggling to think of what Johann Sebastian Bach achieved. So I would have to put Bach on that top of the list personally, although Beethoven and Ravel and all these other composers are no less great, but in terms of innovation and output and range of composition, it's hard to imagine what Bach was able to achieve such a long time ago. Now this is one that we're gonna get a lot of comments on. I welcome them because there are many valid viewpoints and I'm not saying that Bach was the greatest composer of all time, but he's definitely, arguably, one of the greatest composers of all time for the reasons that I just articulated. I hope this is interesting for you and thought-provoking. Again, I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com, your online piano store. You're welcome to subscribe and ring the bell. Lots more videos coming your way. See you then.